what it is we back fly free sports man back with another one uh this time i want to do something different man uh anybody who follows me on social media knows that i'm a big big combat sports fan uh boxing ufc uh just all most forms of combat sports man i'm i'm fully engaged in it you know what i mean so i wanted to uh touch on a couple ufc things that have been developing over the course of this week and preview to um ufc 295 coming up tomorrow um yeah man uh like i said combat sports man i love combat sports you, you follow me on social media you see me posting all the all the fight clips all the you know the engagement between the fighters and all that like that's my life man you know even got a little a little little something in me like i told y'all before but um you know doing a little little something back in the day um yeah man i uh i wanted to talk about first first and foremost sugar sean o'malley versus marlon cheeto vera they just announced it this this week man anybody knows me again man i'm 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 locked in with this because obviously the history behind it you know sugar sean o'malley my favorite fighter in the ufc going against the only guy to to beat him in a ufc fight or in an mma fight period um everybody knows the circumstances behind that fight if you're a fan of the ufc kind of like a fluky a fluky win by cheeto back in 2020 but he won nonetheless uh Obviously, he kicked the the perennial nerve and in, in Suge's leg. It shut his uh, leg down, gave him drop foot, which he you know sprained his ankle maybe two or three times in that first round. Unable to stand, ends up getting finished uh, because of it. So a lot of people, including myself, would say, "Look, we we never really seen Sean O'Malley lose a fight. He's not the straight up way, you know what I mean?" So. And, you know, you got the other side of that where everybody like, look, the, the kick caused the damage and it is what it is. Like he didn't recover. He wasn't able to recover from it and he lost. But that's why we're here. Um, I believe it'll be t- UFC 299 when they fight in March. Uh, super excited about it, obviously. Um, just a little background on the fighters. Marlon Cheeto Vera, very tough, KG veteran, uh, super durable. Marlon Cheeto Vera is one of the top power guys in the division, right? He he he's he has a lot of power in his hands and his feet for that matter. We've seen him knock motherfuckers out cold with kicks, you know what I mean? So uh Cheeto's no slouch. I talk my shit about Cheeto because I'm a Suge fan. You know, I'm going I'm going to do that. But Cheeto is no hoe. You know what I mean? Cheeto is going to show up. He he's gonna he's gonna give it a hundred every time. Um, he, of course he had the terrible outing against Corey Sandhagen, where he just looked like a fucking amateur. I don't know what that fight was about, but he bounced back in his last fight against Pedro Munoz, which was it was a closer fight than I think the judges gave it. The, the, than the judges judged it. Like I don't, I don't, I didn't really see him dominating the way that they had him on the cards, but he... no, so we're... yeah, I don't know what the fuck that was about, but um, yeah, Cheeto, Cheeto is one of those guys where. He's not very active. He's not a very active striker, but he's a powerful striker. What I mean by active, I mean, you know, he's not as he's not as engaging, especially against the faster guys. He's not as engaging as he probably should be. A lot of times he looks for for one shot to put you out. And I don't think that's going to work in, in this type of fight. I think uh, I think Sugar Sean O'Malley is able to piece him up easily. He's too quick. And, you know, like it's it's just. I think this fight will show the levels that it would have showed in the first fight. Cause if anybody remembers in the first fight, Suge was kind of teeing off on him a little bit before the, the perennial nerve kick. 
It's just two different. It's just two different classes, and I think that'll be shown. Um, everybody knows Sugar Sean O'Malley. He likes to fight at range, likes to pick his spots, be precise. He's extremely accurate with his shots, whether he's kicking or or throwing strikes with his hands. Um, just electrifying, quick twitch ability. Mixes it up very very well. I think that's a problem for a guy like Cheeto who looks for one shot because he, he Sean's not going to be there. He's not when when Cheeto throws these shots, Sean is he's not going to be there. Just simply put, he's not going to be there. I don't think he's going to be able to catch him with something big, and that's typically how Cheeto wins his fights. I don't see him outpointing Sean O'Malley through five rounds. Like I said, he's not an active puncher, and don't get me wrong, Sugar's not the most active puncher, but he's an extremely great counter puncher. And he, and when, if you make a mistake, it's lights out. He's shown it time and time again. If you make that one fatal mistake, it's lights out, and he going to the crib, man. And this is his first title defense, so I'm expecting him to be extremely sharp. Of course, Tim Welch, uh, working with him, he'll have him ready. Yeah, uh, I see, uh, man, I'm going to go with a second-round stoppage. I think Cheeto's tough. Cheeto will make it out of the first round. But if you go back and watch a lot of Sean O'Malley's fights, he he stuns people in the first round a lot of the times. Uh, he may not finish every fight. He's finished a handful of fights in the first round. But at a minimum, he's going to stun you. You know, with the exception being uh, the last two fights against Aljo and uh, Peter Yan. He actually hurt Peter Yan in the second round and obviously put Aljo away in the second round. So... But prior to those two fights, a lot of the time, Suge hurts you in the first round. He's going to hit you with a big shot. And, and I think Cheeto will get hit with that big shot in the first round, but I think he'll kind of weather the storm, so to speak, and make it to the second. I think Sean finishes him in the second. So that's just my quick prediction for that. But, um, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm putting money on that, too. Like, anybody want to bet me or I'm, I'm putting money online. I'm, I'm doing all that. Like, I, I want this. I want this bread for this fight. This is a personal fight, man. The Sean O'Malley fans, and I'm sure it's one for him. He probably won't admit it, but after the fight, I'm pretty sure he'll be he'll be candid about that. That he wanted this he wanted this fight back, seeing this is the only blemish on his record. And I think he'll handle business fairly easily, man. Even though I think Marlon Cheeto Vera is very game, he's gonna come fight. He's he's one of the toughest motherfuckers in the in the promotion. So yeah. I just I don't think he has the uh the skill to compete at this level uh with Sean O'Malley. So I'm pretty sure there are varying opinions on it. If you look online or wherever you, you know, find your your MMA news or or previews or whatever. But just the way I see it, I don't see I don't see Cheeto overcoming this overcoming this hurdle. And I I don't see it at all. So that's really all I got to say about that. But I had to talk about it because Sean O'Malley is my favorite fighter. Like I said, um, I think he smokes him, man. Like he said in his recent interview, I think he smokes him. It's just as simple as that. So I'm looking forward to March, to say the least. But um, this weekend, to actually tomorrow, two big fights. So I'm going to kind of preview those two just a little bit. Uh, Co-main and, and main event for UFC 295. Um, first, man, well, everybody knows John Jones and Stipe Miocic. They, uh, their fight is off. John Jones suffered an injury in training camp. Hopefully he gets well soon. Uh, so therefore I guess Stipe said, no, nah, I'm not fighting since I'm not fighting that guy. And I don't blame him. I'm not fighting one of these young killers either. So yeah, shout out to Stipe as well. Um, so in that, in, in place of that fight, we have a very, very good fight, man. The number four ranked guy, Tom Aspinall, and the number two ranked guy, Sergey Pavlovich. Now, these are both guys who have looked like they they just been running through the competition. Like it's just been it's just been a smoke show, especially Sergey Pavlovich. Um, with that touch of death in his right hand. He's he's an amazing, uh powerful he's a powerful guy. Um, he's uh, he's like the fucking Ivan Drago of the UFC to me. Like he just he puts motherfuckers to sleep, bro. Preferably in the first round for him. He's just one of them guys. He has, like I said, he got that touch of death in his right hand. It's hard to it's hard to uh, avoid that for the duration of these fights, man. Um, 
But if it's one guy that can potentially do so, it's Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall is a heavyweight, but he fights and moves like a middleweight. It's it's insane. He's like 6'5", 260 or something like that, but he moves like he's 6'1", 180. Like, he's very, very nimble, agile. He's not going to stand straight. He's not going to be straight line for uh, Sergey to hit. He's just not going to do it. He's going to move around and be active and use his strengths. So it's it's one of those, uh, what do you call it, the unstoppable force against the immovable object. It's one of them type of fights. It's, it's a speed versus power clash. There's no mistake about it. Even though Pavlovich has the background in wrestling, but we don't. he, he doesn't really – he doesn't tend to use it because he puts guys out. Like it's just, it's, you know, it's just one of them things, man. Um, but he does have that, and you know, at his disposal if he chooses to use it. But like I said, Aspinall is a very, very nimble. And he's his 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 hand speed, all that. Like he fights as if he's one hundred and eighty pounds, but he's two sixty. It's incredible. Um, shout out to Tom Aspinall. He just came back recently from a, a, a knee injury. I think he had a torn ACL or something like that, but he looked good coming back after that. So he looks like he's back to form. And this is a short, uh, short notice fight for both guys. So it's really no excuses. They're both coming in um, on about two weeks notice. And we're going to see who get the job done, man. It's, it's, it's one of them fights for me. It's very, very hard to pick. I hate the term 50, 50 fight, but man, it's, it's it's tough. It's tough, man. Uh, I think if if you pull my arm on it, I'd go with. I'd probably go with Sergey Pavlovich, even though I'm a lot of the times I'm impartial to the guys who 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 have the speed and the movement, like Aspinall. I just think it's Pavlovich's time. I do, man. I, I do. I think that's going to set up a big fight between him and John Jones uh, sometime next year. I, I just, it's hard, man. It, it's, it, this is just, I hate, like I said, I hate the turn 50, 50 fight, but it's very tough, man. And the main event is the same way. So, but if I had to pick, I'm picking, I'm picking Sergey by the slightest of margins. I don't know how he gets it done. But if I had to go to the well, if I had to go to the sports book and put my money on it, I'd probably hedge. I'd probably edge it to uh, Sergey. But obviously, I wouldn't be surprised if Tom Aspinall pulled it off because he's one of them guys, and I think he. Both of these guys are champions, and so it's it's hard. Like, I'm not surprised. However, this fight goes. It's one of them type of fights. Like I'm, I will not be surprised if Aspinall wins, and I won't be surprised obviously if Sergey wins. So yeah, I think that's gonna be a banger, man. We in for a treat with that one. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of them ones for sure, man. Y'all y'all tune in tomorrow. It's gonna be some shit. Um, and for the main event, Yuri Prohaska versus Alex Pajeda, Czech Republic versus Brazil, man. Let's get it in. Um. Yuri, of course, he had to uh, he had to relinquish his title about a year ago with the uh, with the shoulder injury he had. Um, but he's a dangerous guy, and and he never this is for the interim belt, but he never lost he never lost his belt, or no, this is not for the, this is for the belt, this is for the belt, it's vacant. So yeah, this is for the belt. But Yuri never lost his belt, so uh, he's coming back to reclaim what's what he says is rightfully his. Jamal Hill obviously had to give the belt up because of injury. So this light heavyweight division has been kind of in flux over the last year or two since uh Teixeira lost to Yuri. But um <clears throat> I'm looking for this another one, man. Alex Pajeda. We we know we know his story. He just came over from uh, you know, he was a, a high level kickboxer. He has the whole rivalry with Israel Adesanya that's well documented. Uh he's now up at 205 with the big guy with the bigger guys at light heavyweight. So, you know, he won his debut at light heavyweight against a very, very good guy, um, Jan Blahovich. So we know what Alex Pajeda is capable of. He's another one of them guys with the touch of death, right? He's, he's, he's super powerful and he engages. He's, he's just a machine. He's like one of them guys that are like a final boss on, on one of the uh, video games type shit. Like he, one of them type of niggas, 
But um, Yuri, I think Yuri, I think the advantages with him is uh his experience. He's he's way more experienced in the sport than uh, Alex Pajeda is. So I think uh, it, this is another tough fight, man. And I think a lot of I don't I haven't I haven't heard anybody mention this, but Alex Pajeda trains with Glover Teixeira in Connecticut. Like they Glover Teixeira trains with him, so I think Glover Teixeira will give him great insight to uh, what Yuri Prochaska has to offer because they had one of the best wars you could possibly see in an MMA fight last year. If anybody want to go back and watch Yuri Prochaska against Glover Teixeira, that shit was a war. Like that shit was a complete war. So I think I think Teixeira will be able to give him great insight. He'll be able to give Alex great insight to uh to Yuri's tendencies and what he likes to do and you know openings and things of that sort. So yeah, I, I think this is another one, man. It's like I don't want to say 50-50, but shit. If I had to edge this one, I'd probably say Yuri. I think he's more experienced, uh, like I said before, and I think he does a great job mixing up his strikes too as well. A motherfucker look like a samurai. I think I think he does a great job mixing up his strikes. As Alex Pajeda, he's just straight power. Like he he's we haven't seen him have to do much on the ground, right? Like he's not he's not tested in that area. We don't know. Like he's kind of a, still a newcomer to MMA. But all he gotta do is touch you. Simply just simply put, man. He can, all he gotta do is touch you, man. Like he's he's one of them guys with that type of power. So but uh I think I'm gonna give this to Yuri. I think Yuri will reclaim his belt. And as I said with the co main, I would not be surprised to see it go the other way. Alex Pajeda, like how could you be surprised if he won? But yeah, I think Yuri gets the job done. Those are my two picks, man. I just wanted to kind of go through that real fast. You know, I'll, I'll soon I'll start making more MMA videos, breaking down certain fights and and things like that. Um, get more in depth with the with the uh, breakdowns and shit like that. But I just wanted to get this first one out the way. UFC 295 is going to be a banger, man. Some great fights on the undercard too. Um, so y'all tap in with me like share subscribe fly free sports man touching on the ufc a little bit pause we out of here man